Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. Hello, guys. Welcome to our show. Today we discuss about customer experience, how you can improve it, because we know it costs five times less to uh, retain customers than acquire a new one. So I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Michael Jackness. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for, for having me. I was just telling you before we hit live that I'm traveling right now. So I'm, I'm down in sunny San Diego and taking a, a few days to, to just kind of relax down here, but always, always time to record a podcast. Nice, man. I, uh, I appreciate so much you now that you found time, even traveling, because for me, it's very important, you know, to learn something new. My audience loves learning. Before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you decided to share with us about customers. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my background is originally in, in IT, so I have a new technology experience. Uh, I left a full-time job in 2004 to, to do my own thing. First was in affiliate marketing uh, and then moved into e-commerce in 2012 uh, and have been selling products online since then. And also uh, run a training course in podcast about e-commerce as well. And so customer experience the conversation today will be both uh, from physical products and also uh, on service as well. Nice, nice. Love your experience. <clears throat> okay, let's start from the basic. Can you tell uh, how to satisfy customers? You know, uh, for example, uh, I have uh, my customers and I found that I need to use personalized approach to uh, each of them because they are different. They have different desires. I can't say send the same report because some of them need the full picture others don't they just check out how many sales they can get and uh, many other stuff can you tell about personalization how to learn customers before uh, uh, implementing or uh, creating some uh, services for them yeah I, mean, I think it really just starts with thinking about how you like to be treated i mean it's, uh, we, we're all customers right and you know, when, when, when you're buying something from somebody, your, your biggest concern isn't how much money they're making off of you, right? They're, your biggest concern is or as far as they could. Do you feel like you got good value in, in what you purchased? Did the people that you purchased from feel like or, or did they, they cared about you in that process? And so I think it, it really just starts right from there. I think there's often a disconnect of, when, when you're the entrepreneur or you're the person selling something uh, that people often think about themselves first and not, and, and not the unnamed person on the other end of it, because it's, uh, it isn't the same retail experience that it was when our grandparents were alive um, or our great grandparents, where it was all in person and very, very mm -hmm. personable. And now it's just some numbers or characters on a screen. Um, and there's a huge disconnect. There's that cognitive dissonance between you and your customers, and it's very easy to just worry about how you can squeeze them uh, for the most money and not uh, provide the best experience. And you know, I would I would submit that uh, you know the 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 added just how can I make the most off of this transaction is actually the most short sighted uh, because if you think about long term, as you mentioned, kind of in the kickoff, uh, it's it's a lot cheaper to to sell the same person more. And, and so oftentimes people are just thinking in terms of today and not in terms of the longer term. And so, I, again, I really just starts from trying to think about things from the other side of the equation. You know, if you were your customer, how would you want to be treated? Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> we want to get the best. And uh, can you tell, for example, if uh, businesses can't satisfy all pain points, some problems uh, by learning their customers, what to do, how to help as much as possible? Because, for example, uh, when I have some issues uh, with many big brands, even including LinkedIn, Upwork, many others, it 
it's hard to reach out to them to get support because uh, probably they have big audience and not probably they have big audience <laughs> and uh, it's hard to satisfy all of them uh, so uh, your insights how to do it how to help them uh, for example if you have a lot of customers but your resources are limited mm -hmm. yeah i think you know, when you talk about a company like linkedin like facebook like amazon you know this is where capitalism I think is at its worst, right? I mean, I'm very much in favor of capitalism, but when a company gets to be a certain size, uh, it all becomes about the money, right? All the things I mentioned before kind of go out the window, um, you know, and they're just, they know that they're printing money. They know that you need them more than uh, they, they need you. Cause I mean, where else are you going to go to, to advertise besides Facebook? I mean, obviously there, there's TikTok now a little bit, but like if you're in the business community, LinkedIn, uh, if you're selling online, you got to be with Amazon. And so these guys end up with immense amounts of power and can do whatever they want to you. Um, you know, I, I think in terms of businesses, the question you're asking in businesses of our size, yes, you might have limited resources, um, but you're in a position where you need that customer way more than, than they need you, right? Ver versus the Amazons of the world. And so I, I think it just, it, it comes down to, um, you, you got to make it a priority. I mean, there, there should not be a situation where customer service in terms of time uh, is something that you can't, that you can't deal with. And, and the more accommodating that you are, the more that you just say yes and just do what they ask, uh, the less time that it takes. And so, you know, our, our attitude has always just been, you know, just, just to basically say yes to anything that a customer asks for, um, you know, and, and until it's clear that they're, they're just scamming us. Uh, you know, then we have to kind of take things a little bit differently. But if it's a, a first interaction with a customer, no matter how absurd it is, um, you know, our, our attitude basically is just to say yes. Because when you're talking about limited resources and time, what ends up taking up even more time and more resources is when you say no to that customer. And the one customer that you say no to has a presence on social media and they go post and it takes off like wildfire and then you're consumed with nothing else but trying to defend your social media, that takes way more time and resources mm -hmm. initially just saying yes to the customer. Um, you know, there, there's exceptions to this. You know, I think back to all the different things that we've done. Uh, you know, the first thing that we did in e-commerce was we owned treadmill.com. You know, we were selling, literally selling treadmills and ellipticals and, and pieces of fitness equipment. And so when someone in, in that industry or that business that we had, had obscene asks, like, I just want you to come take this thing out of my home, give me a full refund and whatever. I mean, for a $2,000 machine and the logistics that go around that, we just weren't in that position, right? Fin financially to be able to do that. And so, you know, I, I am realistic that there, there are exceptions to this, but in the world that we live in now, where most of our products are somewhere between 20 and $100, um, yeah, we just give them a full refund. We just give them their money back. Uh, you know, our cost is somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25% of the retail price. So our actual loss is five to, to $25 in that example. And by the time you pay for return shipping and the potential uh, repercussions of, of pissing off a customer, uh, you know, it, it's actually cheaper just to, to give them the full refund. And, you know, I just, again, I always try to give a benefit of the doubt, um, you know, everyone's in a different mindset, different circumstance, whatever it might be. Uh, sometimes you think that they're full of crap or that they're trying to take advantage of you when actually they really feel this way. And again, it's just easier to just give them their money back. And if it gets to a point where once a year you find that one customer who's realistically, legitimately trying to scam you, then you can put an end to that, that one person and, you know, establish enough evidence to, to, make it overwhelming. So if they do try to attack you, but you can go back on the offensive. Um, but you, you have very little ammunition with action uh, customer. And, and so we just tend to say yes. Yeah. Love it. Love it. By the way, I had the same experience when uh, I didn't have enough experience to handle angry customers. Uh, and even if you are right, a hundred percent, it doesn't mean, you know, that you need to uh, save this money. It's better to get them back uh, to refund. Okay, you can lose something. But uh, yeah, I think reputation is more important 
uh, then uh, money uh, in the long run because uh, if you yeah if your goal to grow business for a long time it's better to do it yeah i completely agree with that i remember when i did these terrible mistakes uh, and i got it no way the next time uh, it's better to uh, refund uh, even if you lose that's okay because yeah. you can win from other customers and yeah people are different they have different behaviors understanding of this world so that's okay you know <laughs> probably they are not our customers uh, you know i found on your linkedin profile that you have that you started your first business at 18 you know hmm. so I did. imagine you know uh, i love it can you tell about your entrepreneurial journey because you know i i i get a lot of questions how to start a business how to go ahead how to find the first customer can you tell uh you have so huge experience can you tell uh how to start today for someone who is willing to have own business uh yeah any tips about that Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll go all the way back to when I was 18, which was in the last century. It was a long time ago, <laughs> uh, getting, getting older, older and older. Um, but I, I think that there's a couple different types of entrepreneurs out there. There's uh, the type of entrepreneur uh, who, who's in it for, you know, the excitement and the, and the kind of the, the, the journey and things of that nature. And then there's other people that are, uh, that take a very, structured approach and it's really just about making money uh, which is not not bad either way I'm, I'm certainly in the the first bucket of you know it, it's uh, I, i'd rather uh there, there's a funny saying it's like entrepreneur the definition of entrepreneur is i, I work uh, 80 hours a week so i don't have to work 40 because uh, you know the regular job you work 40 hours and you get paid consistently and all these things if for me it's it's really just there's an excitement level it's kind of almost an addiction of uh just being scrappy, doing my own thing, controlling my own destiny, uh, whatever the outcome is. And, and, and certainly over the last 20 years of, of doing this, you know, there's, there's been immense highs, immense, you know, crazy earning years of, of amounts of money that I could never dream of. And then there's been immense lows of, of losing money of, you know, just having things not, not go well. Um, but again, I, I'd rather be on that roller coaster and that journey than uh, getting the steady paycheck. And, yeah, I think the advice I would give people in terms of the first business to start would be the same thing that kind of happened by circumstance. I didn't fully understand it when I was 18, but doing something that, uh, that you already know, uh, there's that Malcolm Gladwell book outliers, you know, so something that you've already put your 10,000 hours into that you, that, you know, disproportionately well over the rest of the community, uh, the rest of society. And, and for me at that time, uh, that was just knowing things about computers. You know, I, I was a kind of a nerdy kid. Uh, I grew up in, in the 80s and 90s when uh, personal computers were really just becoming a commonplace in the household. It was like just, you know, becoming, you know, commonplace to, for, for, for affluent people or, or, or certain segments of the population, at least, to be getting computers. And... You know, I, I was just lucky that I was along for that ride. And, um, you know, I, I started building my own computers and just uh, really took an interest in, in, in understanding all the software that went into it and all the hardware. And when I turned 18, it was just, you know, being at the right place at the right time, but also marrying the experience that I already had uh, with a need that, that was there, which was, you know, people were looking to put computers in their homes or put computers in their businesses and utilize computing more. Uh, and I, I had that knowledge where, where they didn't. And so I started you know, building computers, uh, helping service people uh, in their homes. And eventually that led to, to business customers, which led to my, my company growing. Uh, and eventually uh, for a while, I did take a corporate job. One of my, my clients uh, did hire me. Um, and and my, the next thing that I did, the, the, Thing that I've had the most success with in my life uh, from 2004 to 2010 uh, was in the online poker industry. Um, you know, so I married the knowledge that I had in, in websites and technology with my biggest passion at the time, which was playing poker. You know, this is back in a time where uh, you know, everybody, especially in North America, like wanted a poker chip set and wanted to play poker and wanted to go to the casinos. Like poker just became like this, this, commonplace thing where in years past it was kind of like this seedy thing that happened in back rooms right and 
all of a sudden mm-hmm. like rounders came out and Chris Moneymaker won the world series of poker and like all these things kind of um, came together. Um, and, and so like, again, I, I took something that I knew a lot about uh, and, and married that together and it became uh, incredibly uh, successful because I, I was doing something that I knew. And so I, I would suggest to people listening to, to start there, think about the things that you already do in your personal life, the things that you're really passionate about, you know, that can be anything. Uh, and, but it, it, whatever it is, you know, way more about it than, than your friends that, that don't, you know, so it might be, you know, for me, like the things I love doing, I love scuba diving, for instance. And so, um, you know, I know more about that than any of my friends who don't scuba dive or anybody that's just looking to get into it. I, I love playing poker. As I mentioned, I love traveling. Um, you know, so there, there's the things that I, I, I love business, you know, so that, you know, I've also married that as well, but, you know, I, I've spent all this time and experience uh, doing these things that people that are, that are up and coming, looking for information about that or looking for products in that space. Uh, I can provide them something and, and that, uh, you know, lessons that you've learned from doing that are, are just incredibly valuable. And I, I think starting there is, is really the, the best place. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it. Especially you mentioned about passion. I think without passion, uh, never start any business, you know, because yeah. I remember when, yeah, uh, I had a business uh, when I chased money. I felt that I, I could earn a lot of money. After that, three years of investing on this business, I lost a lot of money, resources and got it. No way. It's not for me because I hated Monday, I loved Friday, uh, and after three years, uh, when I quit, I felt happiness, you know, <laughs> because yeah. I lost, <laughs> yeah, this business. And yeah, passion is more important than anything else because with passion, you can work more than eight hours a day. You can work on Sunday, on Saturday. It's like your hobby, you know. When you have business like your hobby, then you can go ahead. I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, 100%. love it, love it. Yeah. Uh, can you yeah. tell about instance, your unique uh, selling? Uh, yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah, no yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. It's okay. Go ahead, please. Okay, let's talk like, about... I was just looking at you. Uh, there's a, a bit of a delay. I'm going to stop and let you... Uh, uh, go ahead. I apologize. Uh, that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can you tell about your unique selling proposition and share your insights that you uh, try to sell because of this connection? Yeah, we, we had some issue. Uh, your unique selling proposition and uh, and finish <laughs> your quote that you try to say. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for unique selling proposition, I think you, you people often skip this step, right? It just you, you get you hear about uh, you know someone selling online or doing something from a podcast like this or reading a blog post or whatever, and you get excited about the opportunity to make money uh, and, and rush to, to go to market without really thinking through your unique selling proposition. And so with each of our brands, uh, it, it's something a little bit different. You know, with our physical products, we always point to customer service to bring the conversation full circle. And so you know, there, there's never going to be a review anywhere about any of our products that is going to say one of Mike Jackness's companies provided awful customer service, like never buy from this company. Like that review doesn't exist anywhere on the internet. What does exist is even from pissed off customers, holy crap, uh, I didn't like this product and I'm never going to use their thing, but man, they provided amazing customer service. And, you know, I, I love seeing stuff like that in, in writing. Um, in addition to that, when it's the physical product, we you know, try to deliver something like a, a six-star experience rather than a five-star experience with something that just over and above, not just from a customer service standpoint, but uh, maybe it's a free gift that you don't even advertise on your website or your listing on Amazon, just a free something in the box, a little something extra people didn't expect. Um, you know, Looking at ways to actually solve problems that people have or, or, or some of the negative reviews that you're, what will become your future competition have uh, provided these types of customers uh, doing things a, a little bit better. And so the, the product I always end up talking about often in this conversation is when we own color it, which is a coloring co- company for adults uh, with our gel pen sets. And so if you looked at the marketplace before we got into it, um, 
you know, the gel pens were sold in basically a, a plastic sleeve and it was a really poor experience. And so like our unique selling proposition was like, we are going to create uh, a Christmas day like experience for adults. And when they, when they, you know, adults like to get things too and like to have that experience. It's something very similar to when you purchase an Apple product and that feeling you have when you open up that box and it just, the presentation is so amazing. And so we, we did that same thing with something as simple as gel pens. You know, we created a, a very similar box to what Apple uses, a thick cardboard box with a magnetic like enclosure. Um, people actually collected our boxes as much as they wanted the product inside. Uh, we added a, a really beautiful like travel case made of you know, high quality fabric with uh, good stitching and everything, good zippers, uh, names on the pins. Uh, so you know, that was something that no one had done before. Uh, we included a set of refills in the, in the box because uh, when you're calling these jobs, the ink runs out really quickly. Um, and we included uh, free like postcards in there that uh, were original artwork designs that people could color and then mail to people or whatever. We just people with an overwhelming positive experience. And then again, if someone did reach out uh, experience, which happens, you know, you don't want it to happen. We're selling hundreds of thousands of bucks a year. There's going to be, you know, two crimson red gel pens in the box by back in the, you know, forest green pen gets left out. You know, instead of saying, you know, so we just send them the pen that they want. And then we gift, uh, you know, basically as an apology in, in the box. If someone wants to return it or doesn't like it for any reason, hey, just keep it, give it to a friend, we'll give you your money back. Customer experience, you know, part of the point. You know, yeah. using one other experience, um, just real quick uh, on, on uh, you know, on the information side, you know, our unique selling proposition with Econ Crew, which is our podcast and courses, is to just be transparent and actually share everything, good and bad. And most content out there in the business world is all people pounding their chest and talking about how, how easy it is to make money and how uh, you, you're stupid for not quitting your job and just going to do it. When in reality is it's, it's actually quite difficult and there's a lot of ups and downs and so we talk about the things that don't work. Um, we share all of our products uh, where people are often scared to, to be transparent and stuff. And so that's our unique selling proposition on the other side when it's not physical products, there's things you can do as well um, on the, uh, on the on the informational side as well mm -hmm. yeah awesome love it uh yeah yeah great okay let, let's talk about uh negative reviews for example if uh no uh, i remember when bill gates uh told about negative reviews uh that uh, if you have them, that means you have the biggest asset to develop and innovate your products. And I know another quote about negative reviews. Uh, if you get only positive reviews after launching your product, that means you launch too late your products. <laughs> so because <laughs> you true. can start early now to learn and improve, develop, and innovate. Can you tell how to handle negative reviews? Uh, I mean, like how to communicate with customers who left them your uh, tips about that and uh, yeah uh, anything about that <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, first of all i love what you just said um you know if you're getting nothing but five star reviews you probably launched a little bit too late you know time is your biggest commodity in business and in life and so if you're you know reiterating and reiterating and reiterating and letting months and months and sometimes years go by before you just launch um something that is good enough. I mean, I'm not suggesting launching a piece of crap, but like you can take it too far. And as you just said, um, I really love that. I think that that's really important. The other thing I would suggest, you know, when I was younger and I got negative reviews, my first reaction was always to blame the customer, the person who wrote that, you know, there would be obscenities littered in, you know, uh, or calling them stupid or, <laughs> ignorant or whatever, right? It's just like, you're like, well, they, they don't understand, you know, they're a bunch of idiots, you know, whatever. It's always like, <laughs> you know, thinking about it's, it's, it's their fault and not your fault. Um, yeah. Now I, I really take it as kind of, as you were talking about, as the opportunity to, um, to kind of turn that, that frown upside down. Also to take responsibility because as I mentioned before, 
you, you know, unless someone's just flat out trying to scam you, which is actually the minority, it does happen. Again, don't get me wrong. There's, there's people out there, but most people mm-hmm. that are leaving a negative review are legitimately leaving their honest opinion and their honest experience. Um, yeah. And so if they didn't understand how to use product, that's on you. You can provide better instructions in the, in, in the product or make it easier to assemble or, or to use or whatever it might be. And so now when we see that happen with some of our, our products, we have a product that's a collapsible trekking poles. And they're, to me, they're very intuitive to use, but we got dozens of negative reviews. Like I can't figure out how to put these together. These don't work properly. One star, blah, blah, blah. And so instead of, you know, calling the people names and, uh, and, and throwing a hissy fit, we uh, included better instructions in the package. And we also put a, um, a QR code, fluorescent yellow triangle QR code that says like, stop, before you open this box, scan this QR code. And we put some effort into putting together a video showing people how to put the product together. Again, it's a little bit complicated the way you got to put together and pull it's got you know and it's got a thing that a mechanism that clicks in place again for me very intuitive um but for most people they just or a lot of people they weren't figuring it out and so again it's an opportunity to to make that experience better um we have some products that uh, are ice products our ice wraps product line uh, one of the products is super heavy um and we get a lot of negative reviews of you know it's too heavy for 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 my arthritic hands or whatever and so we just try to do a better like a better job explaining to people that this is a, a heavier product. Um, and if you don't want something that's heavy, then this might not be for you. Um, because the, the people that leave the five star reviews are happy that it's heavy. And so, you, you know, it's just, it's a matter of, can you do a better job with your messaging uh, to just stop the people that aren't going to have a good experience from buying it in that case. And so there's, there's lots of different ways to, to problems. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with one last one. Um, whenever it is something that you've done wrong, you try to go over and above. And so I, one of my favorite examples is someone uh, left us a one-star review on Amazon for our tactical gloves. They got two left gloves. Um, and so they left the one-star review. They didn't read out to us and ask us to fix straight. And they just left the review one star. Like I got two left hand gloves as this and it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so instead of, again, just being aggravated at them, I went back in the back room. I got two pairs of gloves. First of all, I opened the box to make sure that they were both left and right gloves. I wrote a handwritten note to the customer just saying basically like, um, you know, we, we, we do everything that we can to make sure that these types of things don't happen. Uh, but there's human beings in the process and uh, every now and then like embarrassing situations like this arise. You know, please accept uh, a replacement pair of gloves with our compliments. We have some, uh, here's an extra pair to either leaving your truck um, so that your hands are always warm. That mm-hmm. when, they, yeah. when they got that package, uh, literally took the time to type out the entire letter that I wrote by hand and update their review and say basically, you know, just tell people, hey, look, like go over and above. And and so I think again, it just I, I look at the bottom line point is I look at all of these as opportunities to to no matter what whatever the review is, it's an opportunity to make the situation right to over go over and above to, to like turn a negative into a positive to, to turn someone who was upset into a loyal customer to turn anybody who reads that review in the future that might've been turned off by your business into a loyal customer. There's so many opportunities you can use uh, that, that experience for. And if you, if you don't, then there's, you're guaranteed to have an outcome, right? Either be guaranteed a bad outcome or try to make it something that is a good outcome. Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, by the way, uh, 30% of people can uh, replace uh, negative reviews to positive ones if you decide their problems, if you can help them, support, and tell, okay, uh, that was bad experience. Let me help you. Let me decide it. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, 60% of people can buy one more time if you decide their problems. So y- you can get a lot of customers back just to pay attention to their pain points, to decide them. Uh, yeah, I love it, love it. Uh, Michael, can you tell uh, common mistakes that businesses do uh, 
with uh, customer experience from uh, what it's better not to do today and your tips uh, how to find a much better way yeah I, mean, I think one of the biggest mistakes when i get return policies they make mm-hmm. it's way too cumbersome you gotta like deep and you gotta like do a rain dance and go in circles six times and you know whatever to get it to get a refund um you want it shopping, you know, like the show that like major buying decision pain points that they have uh, returns is, is number one, uh, trust and then shipping speed. Um, you know, the big break. So about it, so all percentage of people actually return your product, but almost everybody reads your return policy. And so if you are making it perceivably difficult to return your products, then you're going to lower your conversion rate and not get customers to begin with. If you just have a a very generous return policy, it encourages people to buy and very few of them are going to actually take advantage and return it. Uh, Our return policy, uh, I'll use the coloring company again. Uh, We actually even make, make it kind of funny. It's just like, we will take the product back in 30 days, no questions asked. And like, we like list, no questions asked means like you can, you know, drop this in a puddle of of water and destroy it by accident. You can color all the pages and uh, return it and just say you didn't like it, even though you've clearly enjoyed it. You can like zombies could wipe their brains on it. Uh, You can give it to your girlfriend as a a gift and she breaks up with whatever the reason we don't care. We'll take it back. And, you know, basically our feeling is like, if you're willing to take the time to put it in a box and pay the shipping to get it back to us, we'll give you the refund because you clearly just aren't happy. And why make it more difficult than that? Like why make it like, you know, as long as you have it in the original packaging and like it's, it's in brand new condition and you still have your receipt and you, know, you return it to us, you know, by the proper carrier pigeon and you know, this, 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 and this, and this in order to qualify for your refund, that doesn't do anything for you. And so I, I think that that's, you know, if I was to point to one massive mistake when I think about online shopping, to me, that's that's the biggest one. Yeah, awesome. By the way, I need to share this episode with someone from Microsoft. Uh, once <laughs> right. I subscribe to their products, <laughs> yeah, and I subscribe to their products. Uh, that was Az- Azure, something like this. I don't remember exactly, but I didn't use these products. And when uh, each month uh, I got payment, uh, I I couldn't find how to unsubscribe. Yeah. I spent so much time to searching for this button. Uh, and uh, I don't remember exactly, but I spent like a few hours. Then I reached out to support team uh, after six months. Uh, because six months uh, I pay, uh, paid uh, $30 a month. Uh, and for me, you know, uh, it's important my time. Uh, and uh, I estimate my time and uh, searching for this unsubscribe uh, a subscription. So uh, if I waste like uh, a few hours, uh, for me it's better to pay this right. twenty dollars a month. <laughs> but after six months, when the payment was like hundred eighty dollars, I got it no way. Uh, that uh, it's better to unsubscribe, and I reach out to support team. And only after that they unsubscribed, and even more they left. Uh, they refund all my money Uh, that was a surprise for me Uh, but that was hard to find this button and i couldn't find just support team did it Uh, even more uh, they replied the first time and told me okay we are subscribed to you that's okay but they didn't i I got one more payment (laughs) yeah Yeah. so terrible it's definitely frustrating Uh, yeah michael i have the question uh let's imagine you started from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills. What will you do today to learn more about customer experience? Yeah, I mean, when I got started, YouTube didn't exist. And, you know, I had to go to the library to like, <laughs> to find information. In yeah. this day and age, I think that there's zero excuse. You can you know, hop on YouTube, um, watch videos, learn from a wealth of knowledge on the internet. Um, there really is zero excuse of why you can't in- increase your knowledge on, on whatever it might be. And so if it's customer experience, I mean, listen, just listening to this podcast episode as a, the first step in the, in the right direction, but getting on, on YouTube uh, or, or making a search with Google and, and looking at various content on blogs, 
um, you can find everything that you would ever need to know. And instead of being a fool like me, like trying to figure it out along the way, because I didn't have anybody to lean on, uh, you can learn from everyone else's mistakes and just shortcut that and, uh, yeah. and, and not make them yourselves. And so um, I, I think that those are the best resources to, to hop to in, in this day and age. Uh, once I got the question from uh, one of my listeners and he asked me, if I listen all your episodes, can I be a good marketer? I replied to him, no, you can't. You can't because uh, it's not about to learn. It's more about to implement, to yeah. execute, to do something instead of just overlearn. It doesn't help. You don't need to listen all my episodes. You need to listen just specific episodes that can help to find ideas that you can implement. Can you tell more about implementation? Uh, yeah. Uh, for example, if you learn something, uh, and you mentioned that uh, you can shortcut some mistakes, but for me, you know, I do a lot of mistakes. I think it's the part of the process. Without mistakes, it's hard to go ahead, and uh, it's knowledge, it's skills. I remember when Shaquille O'Neal shared that uh, he doesn't uh, think mistakes are mistakes. He thinks it's like knowledge. Uh, when you start something new, you you get these mistakes to learn the process and improve it. Uh, any tips about implementing when you learn something? Yeah, absolutely. We'll use Shaquille O'Neal as, as the example. I mean, watch YouTube videos and read all the blog posts you want about how to shoot a basketball, but until you go out there and actually do it yourself, you're never going to get better at it. Of course, mm -hmm. you're going to miss probably the first 20 shots you make, but eventually you're going to get one in and eventually you're going to get better at it. Um, you know, the same thing can be said on uh, a website. And so I think there's a delicate balance of like, you can some of these episodes and, uh, and get, started. but getting started is just as important, if not more important. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. What's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, this is, you're not operating on somebody. No one's going to die. And you don't get something quite right, a setting quite right. You just get later. And so you started in the world before I've never been afraid to do it. Like I will just launch uh, when once it's launched, you'll realize that you made some mistakes. You, you fix those. Uh, if you critical thing you'll do is, is like crash your website or whatever, like either restore from a backup or start over or watch it, whatever. I mean, like, the, the stakes are so low um, to, to just getting, but the stakes are high for not getting. Started, um, you know, is a day that you haven't like started your business. You can't get that time back. I mean, you know, as you do get older, you start to realize, like, I mean, you're never going to get that time back. Right? You waste a year or two or 10 about it or, or whatever, not actually doing it. Uh, there's that saying, like, the best time to start is, is yesterday. The next best time to start is today. Um, and, you know, so just yeah. just get started. Just go sign up for Shopify and or Amazon or uh, Kajabi mm -hmm. or, or YouTube or WordPress or whatever it is that you're going to get started with, whatever online uh, business you want to get started with. And, and then the key is, like, to actually do it. A lot of people sign up and then you know, they do a couple of things and then they stop. And so you got to like, when you implement, you got to like, you got to be committed to, to doing it. I mean, the, the best analogy I can give is going to the gym. You know, you go sign up for the gym and, and go there for, for two weeks and lift some weights and, and stop, like nothing's going to change on you. You're going to see yeah. no difference. But if you go there every day for, for a year, um, you're going to look way different and feel way different. Same thing with online. You know, you go sign up and put a couple of pieces of content up and, no one's reading your stuff. Congratulations. You're in the same boat as everybody else that's, that's gotten to that point. <laughs> the people that, the, you know, the people that succeed are the ones that stick with it for two years with the only person reading it is, you know, them and their mom, but eventually it gets, it gets traction. And the same thing again with, with Jim goes every year for in January, everyone has a new year's resolution. I'm going to go do this or that or the other, they go to the gym for a couple of weeks and, you know, they're actually in, in worse shape after the first two weeks as they're sore and, miserable and everything else and they don't get past the point of of actually seeing the results and so you got to get started and you got to be committed to it and, and stick with it and that formula is is literally all it takes to be successful online with whatever you do 
start it, stick with it. Guaranteed, you will see results. It's not maybe, <laughs> like guaranteed, you will see results in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Uh, I couldn't agree more with that. A hundred percent. Because uh, uh, I remember when PewDiePie, uh, he posted a hundred videos to uh, to get 285 subscribers. Today he has 110 million subscribers. Mr. Beast posted videos an year and a half to get first thousand subscribers. Yep. But I found a few studies uh, that many content creators uh, don't record the second episode, don't write the second article, don't write, uh, don't film the second video because they can't get results from the first one. Yep. No, guys, I, I don't know how to do it. Uh, it's not like uh, short, uh, you know, uh, it takes time. It takes time to get experience, knowledge, skills, to overcome obstacles, to learn, because uh, it's the same when kids say the first word or uh, make the first step. Mm. They can't do it right. Yeah, it takes time yeah. to learn from the, to improve it. So uh, it's the same with content creation, with customer ex experience, with anything. It takes years. Yeah, yeah, to get uh, some meaningful results. I love it. Yeah, Michael, yeah. 100%. People, people look at Mr. Beast or PewDiePie and are like, oh, man, they have so much success. It seems so easy. But they don't want to think about seven years ago, like when, you know, it took them a year and a half to get that first thousand subscribers, right? I mean, people yeah. often look at the result and, and are jealous of that and aren't willing to put the work in. You put the work in, there's still plenty of room online to, to be successful in anything you do if you just stick with it. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned about passion. Uh, I think without passion, it's hard to go ahead. For example, uh, I love playing ping pong. Uh, I'm not waiting when someone will pay money for my hobby. Uh, that's why I can do it all the time. Uh, it's the same with creating content, with your business. Uh, your business should be your hobby when you are not waiting to get money. Uh, but you can do it. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens. Uh, or, for example, you can watch TV. People watch TV six hours a day. So they are not waiting when someone will pay money. Instead, they pay money for movies, for uh, shows. Yeah. So, yeah, just uh, your job is your hobby. I love it. Michael, it's a big pleasure to get on my show, to learn from you. Tell our audience how to reach out to you, how to learn more about you, how to follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're Ecom Crew, E C O M C R E W, basically everywhere. So, ecomcrew.com for the blog, Ecom Crew on iTunes if you want to listen to the podcast, uh, Ecom Crew on social media, on Twitter, and all the different uh, various handles. If you want to reach out by email, it's support at ecomcrew.com. Uh, luckily, it was all consistent. And I'll, I'll leave with one last thing you know, talk about the Ecom Crew podcast. Um, you know, as of recording this with you, we're on episode like 485 ish, something in that, in that range, I've mm -hmm. uh, been doing it for, for many years. You know, when I first started that podcast, literally no one was listening and I'm kind of glad because those initial episodes were awful. You know, I said, um, or, you know, or stuttered or whatever the entire time and, and was all over the place. And it was just a complete poop show. Uh, but over time I learned to eliminate those words from my speech. I learned to become a better interviewer. Uh, it provided other skills in life that have been were very, very helpful as well, but I stuck with it. Right. And now we have millions of downloads and it, it's a, a huge part of our, our income stream and in, in life. And I didn't know anything about, I didn't know anything about podcasting. I, I didn't even know how to like hit record. I mean, I knew nothing, but it, again, I watched a YouTube video. I figured out how to, how to hit the record button. And I was committed to like, no matter how bad, or good the first several episodes would be that this was something that I was going to commit to for at least a hundred episodes and see how it went, you know? And, and at that point I decided, let's see how things are when we get to hundred episodes. But then it was all set. We're going to continue. That's years, you know, a, a, sort of a week for hundred episodes, basically two years. And so by then it was just clear that this is obviously something that is going to be worth my time and money to an effort to, to do. Um, but I stuck with it. You know, if I gave up after the first 10 episodes, I wouldn't be where I am today. And, uh, you know, just the, the first 10 episodes had no listenership. They were awful. But the point is, do it, start with it. You'll have success. Nice, nice. Yeah, very encouraging. Michael, it's a big pleasure to get on my show, to learn from you. 
uh, guys, you can find all links to Michael podcast uh, website uh, uh, in the description below. Listen to us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again, Michael. You know, welcome back anytime to share more valuable insights. I love it, guys. You need to follow Michael because you can see a lot of value. Okay, guys, love you. See you.